Hi guys, welcome to Financial Brilliance, the channel where you learn financial topics. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and comment below. Help us with the YouTube algorithm. Without further ado, let's talk finance. Thanks for that great introduction. Today's video is sponsored by First Street Financial Advisors. They are financial coaches that can help you set up your financial plan. Please consider booking a 30-minute consultation with them by hitting the link in the description. It will take you to our landing page. Today on Financial Brilliance, we are going to be reviewing an online brokerage that many of you have heard about, Interactive Brokers. They advertise heavily on CNBC and other financial news networks. Financial Brilliance has received no compensation or consideration from Interactive Brokers, so this is an unbiased opinion. We have used Interactive Brokers as a trading and investing platform. So, we have some experience with their platform. So, first, Interactive Brokers is a more professional platform. Many professional investors, such as hedge funds and investment intermediaries use Interactive Brokers as their trading platform. When comparing Interactive Brokers to a platform such as Robinhood, Interactive Brokers gives you a no-frills vibe. There are two levels on the Interactive Brokers platform, Light and Pro. In Light, they are competing with some of the free trade brokerages. IB is offering low or no cost trades. Interactive Brokers Pro version offers charts, graphs, and special subscriptions. IB Pro charges commission. Although, the commissions are relatively low compared to a full service brokerage. The Nefrils type feel that goes with the Interactive Brokers platform carries over to their customer service. The customer service is not the best. When you call customer service, you are almost always placed on hold. You must request a call back. Otherwise, you will just waste your time. So, if you are having trouble logging in or trading, you have to wait. Furthermore, some customer service representatives don't know what they are doing or are not properly trained. As far as logging in, we had significant trouble logging in because the IB platform always made us use double authentication. They had us log into our phones and computers simultaneously to input challenge codes. These challenge codes made it more difficult to access the account. The good part about interactive brokers is that they are very lenient on margin account usage and also option trading account approvals. So, if you want to trade puts or write puts on margin, that was allowed. Many brokerages that we have used in the past have been very restrictive on this. However, don't expect any hand holding. You have to know what you are doing. For instance, in the past, we have noticed that some brokerage firms have the option on their order entry to put right covered calls. This is not the case on interactive brokers. When you enter in an order for covered calls, you have to enter in, sell calls to open. So, if you don't know what you are doing, don't use interactive brokers. Moving on. There are a few neat subscriptions that they offer. However, you are going to pay. One subscription that we tried was a trade desk update from the various desks throughout Credit Suisse. We stopped using it because it was pretty much useless and it cost money. It was more of a novelty than anything else. On the positive side, we did get good executions on our trades. They weren't selling order flow like Robinhood. Also, some people might like the professional feel of Interactive Brokers Lite. You can loan out your stocks to short sellers, which we found to be pretty neat. But, you don't receive much interest. So, once again, more of a novelty than an actual profit center. For the individual investor, we would say that Interactive Brokers has neat features, but many features are novelty features. What we mean by novelty is that the features are not useful to the average Main Street investor. For instance, you can buy international bonds. One bond you could buy was an Argentinian bond that paid 30% interest. Or some other junk bonds that were in default. Also, you could buy world currencies. So, we could hold Swiss francs in our account. In addition to all these things, you could deposit money in your account and borrow against the account on margin to make purchases. If you find this all too confusing, I would not open an interactive broker's account. 
out of 5 stars, we would rate Interactive Brokers 3 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to experience more financially brilliant topics, kindly smash that subscribe button now. Just do it. You won't regret it. I'm off to get a cup of tea. Earl Grey, perhaps? Hmm. Please list in the comment section your favorite cup of tea. Anyway, stay financially brilliant.